Hello there and welcome back to Field Study, an exploration into the wild food of the British Isles. So coming up in this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most versatile medicinal mushrooms that we have here in the UK. And then I'm going to talk you through how to prepare it for storage and use over the winter months. Stay tuned. As you can see by the beautiful copper colour of the leaves around me, it is well and truly autumn. And here on this fallen birch tree, we have what I consider to be one of the most useful medicinal mushrooms that we have here in the UK. So its common name is the birch polypore, and that is because, as you can see here, it grows on dead or dying birch trees. And it is a mushroom that has been used by human beings here in Europe, especially um, for at least the last 3,500 years and definitely going back a lot longer than that. So let me introduce you to the birch polypore mushroom. So next time you go for a walk, you can forage for it yourself and make use of some of the incredible health benefits that it has in its treasure chest. The first thing you're looking for is a bracket fungus. That is a fungus that is not growing on the ground and it grows in a shelf-like formation on dead or dying birch trees. Now the birch tree is this tree here. It stands out in the woodland um, and you can usually spot them from a mile off because of this beautiful pale bark with its striations on it. Um, so you can spot a birch stand in a, a clump of trees from a mile off really. So to identify it you're looking for a bracket fungus. So that is a fungus that grows in a sort of shelf formation out of a tree. So not on the ground, um, not growing out from the ground next to a tree stump. This is growing at out of the wood of the birch tree that is fallen. So you are looking for a bracket fungus. On the underside of the bracket you will find these beautiful white pores. This mushroom does not have gills like a shop-bought mushroom. It has a sponge-like surface underneath the cap. Then on top of it you will have this beautiful mottled sort of brown colour um, and it really is quite distinctive. Once you learn this mushroom you will see it absolutely everywhere. It goes a little bit paler and sometimes to white towards the edge. So it can be quite irregular in shape so you notice it's got this knobbly wavy edge to the cap. This is quite a mature specimen. There is a, a younger specimen next to it um, and sometimes it can get this this hump in the middle of it as well. This sort of strange umbo near where it grows from the tree. So if we if we pick this you can see that underneath the cap you have this dense sponge-like texture um, that is white in colour. So fawn on the top, a little bit irregular, mottled and wavy, paler towards the edge and white underneath. Where there's birch trees you will usually find the birch polypore mushroom because it is one of the main contributing factors to the, the death of birch trees in their natural life cycle. Um, and they are great because they rot down the wood afterwards in order to make it biologically available to all of the other mycelium and all of these trees that you see around us. So it is doing good work in the woodland. It has a really distinctive smell to it. Uh, I guarantee you once you've sniffed this you'll start smelling it in the air when you're walking through birch woodland. It is really clean, it is fresh, it smells medicinal which sounds weird but to me it smells like medicine. Oh, beautiful. So one of the main things that birch polypore has been used for over the, the last few millennia by human beings is its antimicrobial properties. So this is mildly antiseptic, uh, antibacterial. So yes, this is antimicrobial and because of that, um, there is a trick that people like to do with this mushroom that is quite popular on the internet at the moment. Um, that you may well have seen before and that is to make an antiseptic plaster out of it. Now the way to do it is to cut a strip, sort of elastoplast sized, um, into the pores. Then ever so carefully pull away at the pore surface. It should come free of the cap and leave you with this incredible plaster. Apply it to the affected area and let it do its magic. 
So there we go, we have a lovely self-adhesive plaster for use on cuts and scrapes and things that is antimicrobial, so it will clean the wound. But not only will it clean the wound, uh, this mushroom is also a styptic as well, so it will staunch the bleeding. Um, and it is, it is an amazing thing. So uh, very, very useful from that respect. But that is only the surface of why this mushroom should be part of your medicine cabinet. Phomatopsis betulina, or the birch polypore mushroom, is an antiparasitic as well. So it is usually taken prepared as a tea in order to get rid of intestinal worms. Trust me, it may not be an issue sort of nowadays, but it was previously in history. So this acts as sort of nature's dewormer. But the benefits for it do not stop there. But this is, believe it or not, an antiretroviral drug. So this contains something called betulinic acid. Betulinic acid is sold as a supplement, like a medicinal supplement, in loads of different places. You can find it on the internet, etc. But it exists within this mushroom. It is an acid which occurs naturally in lots of different plants, including the birch tree. So it exists in the, the bark of the birch tree. And this sort of um, makes it easy for us to get hold of it. So this mushroom is a way that we can get access to betulinic acid um, without having to sort of chew on birch bark. Um, which is a good thing in my opinion. So the science now says that betulinic acid is an immunomodulator, so it can control and regulate the immune system's response to uh, viruses, and those viruses can also be inhibited by the power that this mushroom has. So if you're starting to get a cold, uh, make a tea out of the dried mushroom and your immune system will have a good chance of fighting it off. We'll put links to loads of different scientific studies in the description below so you guys can read to your heart's content what modern mycology and modern scientists are doing with betulinic acid and also the birch polypore mushroom. It's shown quite a lot of promise in inhibiting the reproduction and spread of HIV, which is an amazing thing. Remember, this all, This stuff is all on the forefront of science. Um, study of mushrooms is really underrepresented in the medicinal and pharmacological world. So people are just getting into studying the betulinic acid which exists within this mushroom. Now, on the internet, I have seen this mushroom being sold under the name White Chaga, right? So, you know, Chaga, the mushroom which is on the sort of red endangered list, um, has loads of different health benefits. Um, and it's quite expensive. You can buy it in supplements in, in shops and it's probably been harvested from, you know, the, the big forests in Siberia and stuff like that. And they absolutely ravage the population of trees in order to get hold of chaga to fuel the supplement movement, which is happening here in the West. However, one of the things which makes chaga a medicinal mushroom is you guessed it, betulinic acid. So the chaga actually refines the betulinic acid from the, the, the makeup of the tree that it is inhabiting. Um, in much the same way that this does. So for lots of the health benefits that you are using chaga for, you can actually use this mushroom, which is incredibly common here in the UK, um, and you can go and pick it yourself. So I implore you to do a little bit of reading into the health benefits of betulinic acid and see whether that is what you're taking your chaga for. So rather than uh, relying on a corrupt system of chaga pickers across the world, um, which are really putting pressure on that mushroom species, you can rely on something which is much more common um, if what you're using it for is the benefits that betulinic acid has. I'll take that plaster off now, I don't need it. And lastly, one of the most interesting things that this mushroom can do is a relatively new science. There are papers coming out about it all the time. Um, but that is because birch polypore and the betulinic acid within it is known to be an anti-cancer and anti-tumor drug. So the studies are still in their infancy at the moment. Um, they've tested them on mice, they've tested them on human cancers that have been grown in a lab. Betulinic acid has been shown to reduce the size of some tumors. 
So if you're curious about that at all, uh, then go and read some of the papers that I'm going to link in the description below. It's known to be an immunomodulator, which means if your immune system is down, if it is depressed, then it can stimulate it. And if it is working over time, it can also bring it back to within normal sort of uh, immune system range, which is a fascinating field of study. If you're interested in that, there are very few mushrooms that can do it. Uh, and this is one of them. So personally, I'm going to take this home for its antiviral properties. If you noticed, I sound a little bit bunged up. My girlfriend has been ill over the last couple of days. Uh, so I'm going to take this home and show you guys how to prepare it for use in the winter months as a cold remedy. Stay tuned. So it's a couple of days later and we are back at Field Study HQ. And as you can probably tell by the, uh, the frog in my throat, I am starting to get ill. Now this is an excellent time to prepare this mushroom tea. Um, it is an excellent time to give your immune system a bit of a boost so it can help fight whatever it is fighting. As I said previously, the birch polypore mushroom is an immunomodulator and has all sorts of fantastic chemicals in it which help your immune system um, and have loads of other medicinal properties too. So we talked about betulinic acid. It's also got a thing called lupuloid, lupuloids maybe. Uh, I'll put all of the links to the papers, like I said, in the description below. Um, and those two things are also anti-inflammatories, so they can help fight inflammation in your body, which is a good thing. So we got this lovely young specimen of the birch polypore here that I collected the other day, and it's going to go with the rest of my stuff. What I do is, as and when I see this mushroom, I continually collect it and dry it and put it in a big jar. Um, for use over the winter months. So basically all you want to do is slice this mushroom into sort of one centimeter thick slices. Now when they're sort of young like this, they're, they're nice and soft and it's quite easy to do. As they mature, they get a little bit tougher. Uh, but persevere with it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so just be careful and cut them into sort of one centimeter slices like this. This one sustained a little bit of slug damage, but that doesn't really matter. That's all good. If you want to, you can cut that out, but uh, I don't tend to bother. So that yielded about this much birch polypore mushroom. Now it will shrink as it dries, but um, this is more than enough for making sort of one batch of tea, which will last you for a day, two days um, at the beginning of an infection. So this much mushroom here will make you a single batch of tea and you can use it fresh. The wet mushroom like this is okay to be boiled up and made into tea, um, but I like to dry it for preservation so I can use it when I get a cold. So if I, I get struck down by a cold, uh, I don't have to go and try and find it in the woods in order to then make into the tea. I can just reach for my storage jar and uh, make it into tea straight away. So method number one to dry this mushroom is to use the sort of wooden cocktail skewers and once you've sliced it up you can sort of thread them on make sure there is a gap for air to circulate around the middle of it um, and basically put these in any warm place that has a lot of airflow so I basically shut these in my kitchen cupboards whilst the log burners are light in there and the sort of convection current of air and the warmth has dried these out over the last couple of days like these could potentially use another evening or so there in that warm room um, um, but yes, they are drying out perfectly fine. So that is a good option if you don't have a dehydrator. Um, and if you don't have a log burner, just put them somewhere near the radiator or any sort of heat source in a place that gets lots of airflow that is sort of low humidity. You don't want to put it in sort of like a moist environment because it will not dry out. So that is a good way of drying out mushrooms in general in your house. Uh, do this with wood ear mushrooms. Um, it just makes use of the heat that you're already heating your house with. Um, it is creating secondary uses for energy, which is a good way of being sustainable. Uh, so yes, you can do it like this, but method number two um, is a bit of an investment, but it's a good one if you are going to be serious about getting into foraging, especially when it comes to foraging mushrooms, and that is investing in a dehydrator. Now I got this dehydrator here from a charity shop a couple of months ago for three pounds. It is an incredible time at the moment in the UK to find dehydrators in charity shops because basically everyone went nuts about them during the pandemic um, and was 
trying to store their own food and preserve things for longer. Um, and now they are, you know, returning back to normal life, etc. People are getting rid of them. Uh, they're just taking up space in people's cupboards, etc. So they are getting rid of them in their droves. I've found three or four in the last couple of months, um, bigger ones than this as well. I like this one because it's small and it has a temperature dial on the bottom. When I dry out medicinal mushrooms like this, I like to put them on a relatively low temperature. Um, to not denature any of the good stuff that's in it. Um, so yes, I put them in the dehydrator and just let it go until I think they're dry enough. So get yourself a dehydrator, keep an eye out in the charity shops or at car boot sales, and they are coming up all the time at the moment. So you'll pretty much be guaranteed to find one. So once the mushroom is dehydrated, when you start to feel a cold coming on, you know when you start to get sleepy and you've got a tickle in the back of your throat like I have now, um, it is time to make the tea. And making the medicinal mushroom tea really is a simple process. Um, all you need to do is hot water steep this mushroom uh, for quite a long time. So a couple of hours, a few hours, usually. I like to add in all sorts of other things that are medicinal when you've got a cold. So I add ginger, I sometimes add chili, I add lemon juice, um, that sort of thing. Just because all of these things make it taste a little bit better as well. A little bit of honey goes a long way in it because the betulinic acid in this and the mushroom itself does taste quite bitter. So it helps temper that and make it a little bit more comforting, you know what I mean? Um, it makes it taste a little bit better. So what I like to do is get my slow cooker out, put all of those ingredients in, cover them with water and set it to go overnight on the sort of medium to high setting. Um, and then when you wake up in the morning, you'll have a medicinal tea that you can ladle out into a cup and keep going back to throughout the course of the day. And it will make you feel a hundred times better. Uh, I'm gonna make the tea tonight. I'm gonna drink it all day tomorrow. And hopefully I will be able to tail off this cold that I can feel coming along. But from my own personal experience with birch polypore tea, taking it early on in an infection means that you can head it off before it develops into something nasty. Yeah, you can add all sorts of other foraged ingredients into it like, uh like haws off the hawthorn tree, rose hips are really, really good because they're extremely high in vitamin C. You let me know how you get on with making the tea. Uh, let me know if it worked for you or if you have any recipe ideas. Oh, my voice, I am getting ill. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching this episode. Um, I hope you guys are all all right out there, wherever you are in the world. Uh, go out and find yourself some birch polypore mushroom. Uh, you'll find it growing in a woodland near you if you live in anywhere in the temperate zones of the world, really. Um, and it is your friend at this time of year. Cold season is upon us. Like I said before, I'll leave a series of links in the description below with all of the scientific articles and papers uh, which back up all of the claims that I've made in this video. Uh, go and read through them. There's loads of interesting stuff that I had to leave on the cutting room floor. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to know more about foraging for edible and medicinal plants and fungi here in the UK, then please hit the subscribe button. Right, I'm gonna make some mushroom tea, put my feet up, probably watch Brief Encounter, and uh, I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. You've been a long, long way away. Thank you for coming back to me. Ew.